Hi everyone. On this short video, we're going to be looking at the parietal bone. So if you uh, look, we can see a right parietal bone and a left. You have two parietal bones. Uh, the parietal bone doesn't have many of its own structures to label and identify. The structures we'll be labeling today are just sutures that the parietal bone shares with other bones of the skull, like the occipital bone and temporal bone and frontal bone. So we're really just looking at some of the joints that the parietal bone is a part of. So let's go ahead and label the sagittal suture. The sagittal suture gets its name because it's lying here in the sagittal plane, the plane that divides the body into a left and a right half. And there it is, sagittal suture. You can see it from a posterior view here. And then depending on the angle, you may also be able to see it in some anterior view photos right there. It divides the left and the right parietal bones. That is the sagittal suture. Um, the next suture we'll be looking at is the coronal suture. The coronal suture is in the frontal or coronal plane which is where it gets its name, and it is located right there. You can see it from a lateral view as well. All right, and then this is a good view to see our next suture. If you are looking at the temporal bone, which is right here, you can see that the entire bone is surrounded by a suture. That suture is called the temporal or squamosal suture. So I'll go ahead and draw it in here. It actually goes back behind this structure called the mastoid process. And there it is. And you can actually see it um, continue inferiorly as well right there. temporal suture. And lastly, uh, only visible from a posterior view, we have the lambdoidal suture. It gets its name for, uh, from the Greek letter lambda. Uh, lambda looks like an upside, upside down Y, and here it is. Lambdoidal suture, and that suture surrounds the occipital bone. And that is it for the parietal bone. We have four sutures. Thanks, everyone.